This is Maharajas of Skill, a podcast where we go behind the scenes and talk to founders who are demolishing the myths around building and scaling a big business in India. These are the stories that have shattered the assumptions around Indian consumers and are changing the game completely. I am Krishna Jonakadla, serial entrepreneur, co-founder of Flit, the fashion locator in town and startup mentor, bringing you these stories. Okay, fabulous Friday afternoon. Uh, hey everyone, this is uh, Krishna Jonakadla from Maharajas of Scale. Believe it or not, we've been waiting for this moment for quite some time now. Today we have our first Maharani of Scale, Aditi Balbir of V Resorts. Uh, it's exciting. I think she's got a terrific uh, game going. Uh, I'm looking forward to this session. I'm sure you all do as well. Aditi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Krishna. It is also my first podcast, so I am very excited as well. Oh, that's awesome! So then, I guess uh, you know our listeners will get to hear a lot of stuff you haven't said before anywhere. I suppose. It'll be good fun, yeah. <laughs> Great. So, Aditi, uh, tell us uh, what do you do? Um, you know, what does V Resorts do? Sure. Uh, so, Krishna, I am, of course, as you know, the founder of V Resorts. Uh, this is basically a company that is uh, managing small hospitality assets uh, in the leisure travel category. So means that we like to uh, give people great holidays, and we are really managing the properties uh, that are branded under us. Um, so anything which is small room inventory, anything which is less than thirty rooms, is what we traditionally like to manage. Uh, so th- in a nutshell, that's really what we do at V Resorts. Oh, you're breathing life into smaller properties. Can we say that? Absolutely. Okay. Terrific, yeah. terrific. So, uh, tell us some interesting numbers about your venture uh, that you would like to share with the listeners. Yeah, sure. Uh, we uh, began in 2014, so we are still relatively new. Uh, we've uh, invested about ten million dollars into the business as you see it now. Um, I'm very happy to tell you that when we started, we had only about five properties, and today we have over 125 properties under management all around India. Uh, just to give you another, uh, you know, great, uh, uh, well, let's say a feather in the cap that we're trying to do is that by the end of this year, we should also be breaking even. Uh, operationally, so which means that we've always been pretty focused on making money. Uh, I don't want to say anything to the other guys; they're bigger than me, so you know I'm sure they know what their business is like. Uh, but in our case, it's very simple. Uh, we are drawing revenue and we're drawing profit from these small properties, and uh, essentially we are at a level where the number of properties are enough to cover our corporate costs. So that's really what we are doing. So Aditi, first off, congratulations! Operational profitability is an enormous step, yeah. uh, especially for a um, you know um, burgeoning uh, company like yours. That's uh, phenomenal. Um, I suppose wonderful there was a hint of a yeah, wonderful for an entrepreneur because you know then you're not really so focused on looking at your next fundraise. So it yeah. really takes a lot of pressure off your back. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're busy growing your company and doing the right thing. Uh, yeah. Well, fundraise is also the right thing, but you know, I would rather be busy focusing on customers and growing the company than because fundraise it's a it's more than a full time job on its own. Absolutely, absolutely, agree. So, and I also caught that hint of hair versus tortoise uh, signal that you gave out. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's great. Uh, What does V stand for, by the way? I've always been intrigued. Sure. So V, everybody asks us. Uh, v stands for the view. Uh, so what oh. it means is that you know we promise our customers that wherever we are and whichever location we are, you're going to get a great view. Uh, which also means that you know we're never going to be in in the middle of a city. Uh, we will always be in places which are nice, pretty, green, full of nature. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the promise that we are making. Somerset Maham's a room with a view. Yeah. Promise. Well, awesome. So that's great. But um, let's 
let's talk about how you ended up doing this uh, was this was this your passion how, how did you end up founding this uh, was it all was uh, v resorts always doing what it's doing right now uh well no actually interesting that you asked uh v resorts was actually founded by a group of uh, uh, individuals way back in 2011 and their idea was actually very much like the oyo that we see today was to aggregate properties uh, mostly in the leisure location still but it was basically to be an aggregator and uh, they started this uh, in 2011 uh, sorry and uh, you know uh, i mean initially it was going pretty well but what we did see and what we did come across was that you know the reviews were very mixed because once you aggregate the issue is that obviously one owner is running his property beautifully whereas the other owner not so much or maybe his degree you know of quality is different so customers who were going to one property were not really liking the experience at the other property so the reviews weren't very great and uh, of course uh, by that time we also figured out that an aggregation business needs a huge amount of capital uh, so these guys weren't quite able to run it and it almost it kind of shut down in 2013 um okay. yeah so all how did you end up holding the yeah uh, so how did you end up holding the baby in 2014 uh we were on the outlook we we still felt that the business had potential uh because at that time if you recall there was no airbnb there was no oyo none of these players really existed so we were quite sure that the business model did have its merit and because uh, you know i was from a venture background i decided that look let's look for some uh, institutional funding let's see whether any of the large players are interested and uh, in 2014 when we got the interest from a couple of people seed fund included uh, you know we decided that uh, okay um, uh, you know it was time to sort of uh, also fix the model um, and then of course the hypothesis was that anything in india always suffers in terms of quality the properties and all you can uh, the quality standardization is always a huge piece here and uh, so to do that it would only make sense if we were actually a full fledged management company which meant that we are also you know we're doing everything we are uh, training people we're recruiting them we are uh, doing vendor management we're standardizing procurement so that whole hog of how you see any other hospitality company it could be a star word or a marriott or any of them they all have these services under their vertical so in 2014 we decided to pivot Now interestingly uh, I was uh, you know in the on the fundraising side but however uh, seed fund felt that you know since I had taken the deep position in uh, you know looking for money and so on and so forth uh, the company definitely needed a, a you know a founder and so uh, you know given also the fact that I love travel uh, I decided to sort of uh, move here full time and leave the job at the venture capital company so that's really how it happened So interesting. So I want to get this V right. You keep saying V, and uh, so you were not part of that founding team that uh, began this aggregator. No, no, not at all. In fact, okay. uh, I was part of the venture com- uh, venture capital fund that had given seed capital to those two gentlemen who had started. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. That's the v. Oh, oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh we are talking about the V as in yes. the alphabet V, not the yeah, W. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's 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 dramatic. Uh, you don't see uh, a lot of um, people actually do that. The last time, um, I'm not sure there is a you know very wealthy fund manager in the U.S. who invested billions of dollars uh, uh, in uh, Sears Roebuck. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. No. Um, if if my memory serves me right, I think Bill Ackman, um, okay. and uh, he was trying to. uh he had doubled down he had invested i think 2 or 3 billion dollars he was trying to steer the company in a direction mm-hmm. uh but unfortunately uh you know that didn't end well for him uh, uh, in that place uh, so you don't uh, see quite often that uh, there is an investment that is uh, that you believe is has got potential yeah. and then it it could pivot and you yourself could lead it um that's that's amazing how did you make that leap well honestly if i tell you i mean i'm never i've never really had any uh, you know 
any uh, thoughts of becoming an entrepreneur to be very honest i've always thought of myself as a professional uh, but you know the the whole sector itself i mean travel is is my it's my first love so when the opportunity came i i really thought that you know here's my chance to do something interesting and uh, trust me when i tell you for anybody who's making ppts and excel sheets for a living uh, they they love the switch so i am quite happy with the switch honestly and uh, even if i wasn't doing this i know that a career in venture capital is not meant for me so that's quite clear okay so sh- we should say here here those of you considering a career in venture capital you know take it from someone who's been there done that yeah, it's yeah. not quite what you think yeah, it is it's, it's right. tough as hell so yeah, yeah awesome so amazing venture capital uh, was that where you began your career itself or do you have any past experience no, prior to venture I capital no i i started my career with bearings private equity and then i worked with mckinsey as a consultant for 2 years uh then i went off to do an mba at isb i did a half and half at isb and duke a uh, few poor business in the us and then i came back and joined the venture capital fund so that's my background oh, oh you check all the marks yeah, <laughs> yeah see you <me> there <laughs> don't want to make ppts anymore uh, by the way we still have to make a lot of ppts because you know as you know every time you raise a round So the first thing that you have to make is a pitch deck, and you have to get your business model straight. And then everybody has a different comment on it, so you've got to go back, work the numbers. I mean, there's still a lot of it uh, there for sure. That's interesting. Uh, so let's uh, all of this uh, experience and all of this uh, management education. Uh, would you say did that did that help or did that prepare you for? what you were about to embark on at we resorts or no, uh, it, it was rather the emotional side of you it okay. absolutely did not i'm actually really figuring okay. out why we do all these things i mean what part of the mba program is structured to uh, take you through real life i have no idea <laughs> so no i really don't think so uh, i mean uh, to a large extent i must say my law degree helped me a lot actually so in fact i would suggest that anybody who wants to do anything in life needs to first understand the laws that are governing uh, that particular industry that really helps honestly right. because i never get scared when i see an sha or anything i'm i'm very comfortable and i'm very happy reading documents myself uh, so that's something which usually entrepreneurs stay away from and then of course honestly speaking i mean because you're from a background in finance uh even those are the there is no you know you know don't get daunted over ppts and excel so till that extent i guess they, it has prepared me uh you know but but the real art i must tell you of an entrepreneur is how to write an email and that life can't prepare you for right so there are times when there are hard times when you have to write to your employees uh there are times when you have to beg investors for money so you have to write very delicate mails and i think that's really the core so uh, so mba should really definitely have this whole email writing uh, course as it were uh, which i don't think is there but other than that uh, yeah not not really doesn't really prepare you not really so it was really the passion for travel and uh, that angle that sort of well i guess maybe a little bit of uh, lack of uh, awareness of the challenges because every step of uh, this nature is uh, involves a leap of faith uh, and that means it a lot of leaps of faith can come only from not being completely I aware think you're facts. quite right if you don't know what's going to happen like for example if i if someone told me now let's start something i mean i would just be like oh my god are you you know are you serious are we going to do this again <laughs> So uh, I and you know when people say I'm a serial entrepreneur and all I'm like how how do you even do it how where's the energy because it sucks everything out of you to do your own venture for the first time so uh, yeah absolutely I I I was not aware at all of the obstacles in fact I was very comfortable and as you said I just went with the flow um every year I learned new things and I'm still learning that's how it's happening not a topic for this um, episode but yeah i'm i'm a serial entrepreneur myself um uh, then you have so much energy and much more than i do you know winston churchill said enthusiasm yeah. uh, or rather success is going from yeah. failure to failure mm-hmm. without loss of enthusiasm 
I suppose that's the case. Or right? you have some successful exits under your belt, and so you know that is the, of course, the the real kick comes from there. So I guess if I see an exit here, then I might contemplate doing something else. I'll I'll be confident enough, let's say. <laughs> But you know, I I believe the greater an exit, uh, a mega exit sort of a situation is postponed, or an exit is postponed. the chances of a bigger payout um is that much more likely if you don't give up if you read uh, ray crocks uh, you know mcdonald's yeah. ray crocks story before mcdonald mcdonald's ray crocks life was absolutely completely I unremarkable i read that one story yeah, and i know exactly what you're saying <laughs> right i mean uh, kentucky fried right? chicken i mean all these guys i mean they're making the money when they're 80 so it's giving yeah. me lots of hope <laughs> so <laughs> so, so let's talk about the 125 sure. uh, and they're all at the separate locations all at separate locations yeah oh that's uh, that's no mean accomplishment you keep saying these are small hotels uh, having them uh, 125 locations that means you're dealing with so much diversity so many different things and uh, you have to keep it all together uh, so before we talk about how you are keeping it all together and how how you're making all of this magic uh, happen uh, how did you get to you know this uh, i would say decent level of scale so you know that's an interesting story in fact my scaling story is uh, is pretty uh, interesting so you know when we started off uh, our first five properties as you can imagine were in very obscure locations so one we were we were even though they appeared to be scattered they're not quite scattered because uh, what we do is that we have locations which are clustered around the major metros at the present time we are catering to delhi bombay and bangalore uh, we will then be catering to uh, pune tamil nadu uh, sorry chennai and calcutta later on but at the present time these three cities uh, is what we are looking at and all my properties are basically within drivable distance of the major metros so even though now you know from bangalore i can be in karnataka i can be in kerala and i can be in tamil nadu because it is in tn and uh, you know so is um, varka this thing varkala bayanad is all in kerala and uh, you know orange county and all that is in right. karnataka so it is even though i have properties in these three states but they are essentially for people in bangalore to take a weekend getaway So, in terms of the geography, it's not as scattered as you think. Number one, uh, number two is that you know when we started scaling, we had five offbeat properties, obscure because these were owners who were taking a punt on us, right? Our uh, our brand was not known at all at that time, and they just sort of brought into the story that we'll be able to uh, manage and monetize these assets, which were very offbeat. Now, when we started. Where this all Delhi based? Yeah. Since I'm Delhi based, in fact, even now you'll find the major concentration of properties around Delhi. So we cover almost every location that a Delhiite would look for for a short vacation, be it a quick trip to uh, you know Srinagar, uh, maybe a drive to Himachal or Uttarakhand, a drive to Rajasthan, or maybe a quick flight to Udaipur. So it's actually all depends upon the locations that Delhiites are comfortable in. We even have a property within Delhi. that if someone cannot go even for an all nighter he can just take the day at uh, the whole day off and he can spend the whole day at that resort so you know that's the whole idea that you capture the customer looking for the break in that particular metro now uh, when we started um, you know so the first issue that we came across was manpower because obviously now people who are from the hospitality institutes are looking to join the tajes of the world they are not interested in uh, you know in these small properties which are 20 rooms and they are off beat right so we figured that we had to hire local talent now local talent obviously has no training they are not trained they are unskilled or semi skilled right so we uh, set up our training institute in 2015 itself where we knew that every individual who is running our resort has to be trained in what we want now interestingly we are also not hospitality people right so uh, we ended up with having modules which are very simple you see people at these resorts or people at these offbeat locations are already very well cultured very well are very hospitable you don't have to teach them how to deal with a customer you have to teach them how a tray will be laid you have to teach them how a bed will be made 
and you have to teach them what is dirty and what is clean because dirt is something they don't even look at so these are very simplistic modules like that is what we developed and how we trained these people and very early on you know in 2015 itself we figured that the reviews were fantastic if you read the reviews of uh, our hotels they will usually name a person and say you know this guy was fabulous and he did a great job in making us stay comfortable and so on and so forth so i guess we really figured very quickly that this was our manpower model now the second thing that we figured was that as hospitality companies are they everything is centralized for them right so they have vendors so that quality is standardized we couldn't do that in our case because the last mile connectivity is so broken and it's so tough to reach that place that we felt that the cost will be crazy you know we'll be actually sending taxis and cars to the property to deliver things like soap and all so we figured that's not possible so we started looking for local entrepreneurs and local vendors and we we had to come up with a 100% procurement policy which was local now we did that then the third thing we you know we figured was that you know our staff is mostly male at these properties now the women are at homes they're doing nothing so we figured let's get them you know involved in something creative we told them to start making interesting products we figured that you know we could package them interestingly and we we saw that customers were very keen to see what they're doing and to buy the products that were that they were making very simplistic stuff like you know say uh, a place like uttarakhand is known for its fruit so they were making squashes and jams and you know simplistic things like that uh, we already had a food license for our property so we were able to even license those products and sell them you know so things like that so what i'm trying to tell you is that my scaling story actually became so local in nature and that's exactly the reason why we did not face hurdles and we have not faced the challenges that a company would usually face if they are to scale and especially where there is centralization involved now this model in fact i'm sorry and i'm jumping two steps forward but this model actually has been recognized by the united nations as the first model coming out of a developing country which really looks at using the resources of a developing country and is perfect for that and creates something called a circular economy which is you know what the united nations sees as the way forward if our earth was to you know survive in the next million years or so so uh, very interestingly we kind of just stumbled across this local model and it's really done wonders for us See, people are sticky. People stay with us. People are sticky. They don't want to leave because mostly we are the only commercial center in that village. So, 2015, when you decided to establish this training institute, how uh, many properties did you have? We had 25 properties. Yeah. You had 25. Okay, and uh, I'm just guessing here that all of this realization did not obviously happen at once. uh there was possibly absolutely, a progressive absolutely. realization yeah. you know about yeah. local sourcing um so how did uh did the numbers at some point in time how, how much of this came from the people that you employed um and and so 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 take us through that journey you covered a vast amount of number of uh, inferences and um, you know strategic moves in yeah. just just a few minutes how how did that evolve were there some inflection points that drove each of these uh, uh, evolu- evolutionary parts uh, you know so when we started like i said it was a very simplistic venture that we're going to provide holiday uh, destinations or holiday uh, properties to people who are around the main metros who are looking for a short break so we were never gearing ourselves for the long haul 15 20 day breaks at that time which i must tell you has changed over the years because someone who wants to write a book is actually now going to our property staying there for a month so all those things of course is happening now still majority of the people are the people who are looking for that break right now uh, 2014 all of 2014 we really struggled with the with how the property should look and feel so in fact we did not have our branding uh you know uh, ready uh we actually hired an an agency and in fact seed fund i don't know if you know but is uh, run or is one of the uh, partners is mahesh murthy who is the creative head of channel b right so yes. he really uh, was a very in, uh, integral part of really helping us to develop our brand identity to helping us develop the story uh, you know what the v stands for as you said 
by the way the name was there way before uh, you know way before the view thing came up <laughs> the view thing came up with us but before that also it was branded we reserves so i don't know what thinking they had before that but we are spin on it as it's the view uh, so so he was quite instrumental and all of 2014 i think we just sort of figured how these five properties will be branded and i think in uh, at the end of 2014 i think only two of those five properties were branded we were yet to complete the work in the other three properties uh, so that's the 2014 journey 2015 in fact when i say i had 25 properties in 2015 it means that at the end of 2015 so at the end of 2015 16 march 16 i had 25 properties so that journey was more like you know people getting interested because they found that okay there is this one company who is able to take their pain away and honestly in in that the year most of my um you know the owners who came to me were either word of mouth of other owners friends of those other owners or they were through my uh, you know we we i had done some promotion in the isb alumni network or in the duke network it was basically through my own network that these people were coming in so all of that year of course the scale happened only through that and and the idea was that okay as we get these properties they will look and feel a certain way and this will be the pitch to the customer at that time also we we started grappling with the manpower uh, issue in 2014 because that was when we started getting a lot of properties see arranging one cook here and arranging one rm there is easy but uh, when you look at uh, you know getting uh, uh, all of them together for say 25 properties you have you know three housekeepers per property you have three half fnb service people per property and those are the guys who really need the training they are really those guys who are uh, you know who need those who need these modules so um, that was when we started finding this pain point and we decided that okay we have to develop these modules they have to all be visual in nature in fact we had someone as a consultant she was the ex uh, running the ex oberoi school of uh, management so she came on board and she is really the one who developed all our modules even today we are using that modules developed by her um and then we of course made videos we uh, you know so one the first training is a hands on training where uh, the uh, the trainer is in front of you and they are teaching you how to make it and you have to make the bed in front of them the second training will be online where you are seeing the video and then you are answering a few questions and the third training is when our own corporate manager uh, operations manager will go to the uh, that property will see from the reviews what are the issues coming will audit the property and then will provide training on the things which are not going well so there are these three steps of training that uh, of course we have developed again obviously over um, these couple of years because that year of course we just made our videos and we just had this one lady here who was running that whole show so that's a whole of 2000 uh, 6 uh, 15 16 Now, 2016 and 17 are actually the two years where we scaled very rapidly. So, from 25 we grew to 55, and from 55 we grew to about 100, and then we kind of stopped. So, even after 100, this 125 has happened purely organically. So, one in- interesting thing which we never did, and which even despite the fact that now there were other players in the market who would look after small room inventories like Oyo or Fab Hotels or Trebo. and they were in fact throwing a lot of money in the market as well we never had to struggle with really getting the leads of properties so i think the word of mouth was strong for us we never spent any money in getting those leads we never did advertisements we never did anything and uh, those leads pretty much came to us uh, also you know which we uh, which i feel is because um, the pain point in the industry is definitely very apparent so just in terms of the pure supply if you look at any of the websites say make my trip or uh, booking.com or even trip advisor you'll see there are over 50000 unbranded properties with small inventories in holiday destinations and this is in fact you can find it quoted in the make my trip annual reports as well so you know this is where uh, you know that there is a genuine pain point people with some money build a pretty resort or a cottage in some part of the country they feel they are going to come there and probably live out their life but it never happens 
and then they grapple with the problem of management so yeah so this is basically uh, yeah more or less about the scaling thing Uh, I'm I'm a little surprised you didn't touch upon the economics uh, angle there a bit, um, because you you have properties that possibly fall into two sorts of categories, right? There are pro- properties that are mm-hmm. able to generate traffic, but that are really dr- dying for right. the right. right kind of management touch, the yeah. right kind of practice. Yeah. Goals. So that is that is one. Uh, and I don't know what your experience has been. my experience has been that unless there were and and this is kind of true for most of indian companies as well you know we uh, it's a personal belief that as a country we do not have a working culture we do not define we do not have defined processes and that's almost uh, and if you happen to see something uh, that's mostly borrowed um, i'm no i know that's a sweeping generalization uh, and somebody will judge me for it but but that's the case so what i'm trying to say is if you went to a property and if you had a good experience it's rather an outcome of somebody somebody some person's passion out there as opposed to a assist uh, as opposed to how marriott or hyatt or hilton would do which is which is a cookie cutter you know he, that person anybody who gets into that role knows exactly what he or she is supposed to do right so so you have but i uh, you know having traveled across lived in trebo properties uh, lived in uh, stay sorry stayed in uh, oyos uh, the trebos are, po- are possibly yeah, a couple yeah. of notches yeah, better yeah. than the oyos um i um, most of my experience with oyo has been below average i think they're a great scale story uh, but um, i don't think they've yet brought out the uh, impact in terms of standardization that they possibly hope to do sometimes you sacrifice yeah. you know some things for scale which looks like you know you're taking the opposite direction but sure. let's talk about the economics angle a bit um so for instance mm-hmm. um let's take ginger right uh, ginger is a slightly different business model but um you know when they grew they also uh, ended up tying hands with uh, in, in i think a couple of cities mm-hmm. where hotels were already built and eventually you know those stayed within the ginger fold mm-hmm. the ginger is a tata brand uh, and those properties uh, took two or three years of uh, brand mileage out of ginger and then you know went back and when when i chatted with yeah. a couple of those people i know um, you know they would say hey the economics didn't work out right oh, really? so in in this um, in this case when you went from 25 to 55 uh, what was it uh, that means that for the first 25 the touch that you brought about from an economics and a standardization perspective was possibly both a win win was, was that the case okay sure so let me explain to you how that worked um so you know in fact i would say that the hero of our model and the reason why we can um not only scale but we can take up properties where traffic does not exist which means that we can actually develop destinations as against a ginger or someone who has to look for right. a destination where the footfalls are already there so the hero of our story is basically the fact that we are able to or our cost structure allows us to break even at a 20% occupancy level now that's actually what we do and that is actually what we take to the hotel here that look you are at 35% occupancy and you are still not making money right now uh, of course there are some pros and cons of this so i'll explain that uh, in a bit but the first which that we tell him is that look give us your property so that the first thing that we would do is cost correct to run a 12 room property we believe that we for, for the services that we provide we do not need 60 people running the show we need only 14 to 15 people so a maximum of 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 1.2 is the ratio that we use for our properties that ratio actually goes down as the property number increases so for a 20 room property i would say a 0.8 ratio which is 16 people are more than sufficient to run the property now you have to understand we are venture funded in a hospitality they basically this uh daily wage system is is very uh, um, used uh what it means is uh, that when you have peak seasons you know you suddenly get 10 more people from outside to run your property 
and when you are not in peak season you have only five people who show on your payroll that is how hospitality companies traditionally and even now make money because we are venture funded we could never actually do away with the minimum wage we had to keep people on our rolls and we had to make sure that we adhere to the minimum wage in fact in our policy we say that it is 10% above minimum wage is what we will be paying our people so the ratio had to firstly work the the people were always on our rolls whether the occupancy is 0% or 5% with those people also what we did was that we were able to showcase the hotel year that you drive the occupancy to 20% on an overall annualized basis and you will be able to see a break even level at the profit at the gross profit level which is i think the hero of the entire show now there are caveats here for a pure budget play where the pricing is between uh, say anywhere between say 500 to say 1200 rupees this model does not work so the budget category the, till say till 2000 rupees this model will not work you need a realization of 3500 to 4000 rupees or to break even at 20% occupancy right that's the first thing secondly for a luxury property where the pricing is anywhere in uh, more than 7500 rupees again the model does not work because there even though the price realization is very high the cost of the running that property is way higher and our cost structure of that one is to one will not fit for a luxury property so our model really fit for the mid market segment like the sarovars and the lemon trees of the world or the royal orchids where this price point of 3500 to 4000 5000 rupees all inclusive means i'm including the meals and the experiences as well is where the model really works so we had to narrow down from this 50000 pool of properties that we have in on the sites we have to narrow it down to this sort of a property where the price is justified at 3000 3500 interesting and which is what we really do as well right so like i said that's really the hero the 20% break even is the hero and then after that whatever you are making is really coming to your bottom line and that's i think where the owners are also very happy with us uh secondly we are the management company right so we take our fees and our fees are nowhere near any of the otas the much lower we are incentivized on driving profitability so that way i think the owners always did find that our model was better than any of the others i must tell you that uh, you know during that whole time when oyo had just started and the whole idea was to capture the market yep. they were giving big mgs yep. they were giving big minimum guarantees to owners uh, but we never steered that way i think we were pretty clear from the beginning that we will stay true and and like i said our model is quite interesting because um for us to really hit the numbers which you know which uh look ipoable because obviously every investor wants to see that uh we need only about 1000 odd properties so we can really truly cherry pick from the supply that exists out there which is why i was also very careful about building a brand which was uh local consumer conscious you know things which only very few people will i mean not the entire mass basically will not understand and they will see a premium uh, sort of a positioning to my product vis-a-vis the other people in this category that's interesting so well, uh, yeah you know for a, a country of uh, our size um, i believe you know we need to use not just one tool in the swiss army knife of uh, strategies uh, everything we need an oyo to go out there and say hey you know what um, we we need to um, yeah. you know m- make make the sector hot right um somebody has to take a punt get out there and say yes hospitality is big there are a lot of indians traveling there there is there are in the realm of possibilities there is a lot that can be done i think which is what oyo did so i must tell you that but the one thing we really thank oyo for is that before them nobody even recognized the fact that the domestic traveler is really the king we are not i mean every time we went for a travel conference we were only told about the numbers of foreign tourists are kuch bhi number nahi hai yaar compared to the indian tourist okay like uh, it's 10 million vis-a-vis 100 million there's no like uh, you know uh, this thing and the whole idea was that they were the guys who really brought it to our uh, you know to the forefront 
that the domestic traveler is really the guy who needs to be catered to and we also by the way say the same thing that you know we will go to we we really want to scale we want to be outside india as well but we will basically go where indians go and that's our entire pitch as well our product is absolutely suited for the urban traveler in these cities um who's looking to take a break so absolutely suited for the domestic traveler in fact we have consciously not gone out to the to the foreign traveler i think uh, yeah. it's high time we've always been a big market a big big country um uh, it's just a yeah, few tweaks absolutely. that we had to do in the way we had to look at it and i think uh, that's amazing um so i'll come back to that a bit uh, in a bit uh, but i do have one question uh, sure. all of this obviously uh, came with its own set of challenges right uh, working with local people well um, you know the lack of maybe uh, uh familiarity with uh procedure so in, in a sense what you did was uh, all these people are already nice people they genuinely know how to talk to people let's say courtesy all those uh people skills they have but the what they needed was i'm going to use a term sophistication right a little bit of modernization right so give them that polish no. uh so that they come across and they understand and a degree of standardization comes in so that's great but but all of this i'm sure was not a bed right. of roses um yeah. there were challenges along the way w- w- what were they like uh, we've had our share of strikes at the property we've had all that we've done all that i think what it takes is a strong uh, a strong management um, uh, earlier i used to be involved in these issues now i'm not it is uh, see operations is a very manpower heavy business in no doubt about it and maybe uh, that is also one of the reasons that we could never pull in the large amount of funding because uh, we were always seen as a very operationally heavy company uh that is absolutely you know that's absolutely a given so uh we have we've had our share of uh, people leaving you know bahut bada group hai ko bhag gaya all those sort of things and we've learned from it so we have a hub and spoke sort of a model so you know ko ek jagah se bhag gaya to hum dusri jagah se bhej dete hain usko and stuff like that no in effect i was thinking were there some moments that sort of shook you not here this is not the area that has caused me pain in fact honestly this is the area that has really caused me has given me a lot of joy i mean i know a lot of people by name the my initial five properties i spoke to speak to them on the phone even now they are wonderful people i've showcased them i've done videos on them and i've tried to showcase their story uh this is the part that is truly amazing you know uh krishna krishna because um i mean we think that you know all these problems must be existing in our villages now they must be dirty those people must be illiterate they must not know how to speak wahan pe kitne cases hote honge of this and that crime hota hoga it's so sad that we don't know that ye sab hamari cities mein hota ye villages mein nahi hota hai they are the most wonderful places in the world they are wonderful people they are lovely to speak to so this part of the business has given me joy it hasn't caused me uh, caused me any stress even in a strike situation i know why they have done it because they have found that humne ek property ke uh, you know uh, logon ki salaries increase kar di hai yahan pe nahi kiya you know stuff like that pretty genuine i must tell you so um, yeah so i've never had any any issues with them they've helped me when i needed help so aisa koi issue nahi hai yes uh, training them is not so easy so you can i can let the operations team speak for the uh, for themselves uh, whenever there is a quality issue and all obviously there is somebody to be blamed so training is an ongoing thing it's a hospitality company yeah trust me i've heard of uh, you know worms coming out of uh, fruits even in a taj so ye this is part of the business and you have to be okay with it but specifically against a single staff member i have not come across a single complaint so i must be doing them in this model there is something right about this model it's difficult to put into words uh the challenges have not quite been on this level the challenges have actually been on trying to uh, you know some properties you think they're wonderful but the business in the town me you know so scaling the distribution part has been pretty challenging for us pretty challenging um also because to a large extent people do not get our proposition even today 
uh, it's very tough to explain to somebody that you know people will say acha jaise taj so palaces hai nimrana to heritage hai to aap log kya hain to jab hum kehte hain we are local people don't really get it uska kya matlab hai yaar local kya hota hai <laughs> you know so uh, and even now maybe i'm i'm not so great at communicating what we really do you have to go there to experience it to actually immerse yourself in that culture forget about delhi see satal the way that you will see you know maybe uh, europe okay and that's the sort of stuff i said it's very difficult to communicate to a travel agent it's very difficult to communicate that to a customer when you get calls also you'll see they're saying acha ye rooms kaise hain aapke and i really want to say yaar rooms se ke alawa na aur bahut kuch hai aap ja ke to dekho but uh, that i think is the part that we struggle are you seeing that changing with the advent of um, airbnb uh, while um, in bangalore for example the last 3 years i can definitely count four or five properties that would fit into the you know the v resorts uh, kind of a property definitely and we've also done home stays so uh, where it is it is local okay maybe i don't know maybe i have a different way of understanding things so i can, i i get what you're trying to do um so uh, now that airbnb is there in india to a certain extent there is a greater degree of awareness are people able to get your uh, promise better or is, is it still a struggle actually it's more confusing now <laughs> so i'll tell you what airbnb is right airbnb is a marketplace okay you have a property in fact you don't really exactly have a hotel you have a home stay and you have yeah you have put your home stay on airbnb and usually as it is in the west no one is managing that home it is there and you can take the keys from the owner open it and basically make that your home for a couple of days that is traditionally the airbnb model okay now here so here however we are completely different we are full serviced we are a hotel company so we have everything you can have room service you can do uh, we have a souvenir store we have activities we have um, experiences we have um, guided tours we have treks we have full day dining we have two options for dining uh, we have the proper restaurant inside and we have outdoor seating outside so we are a full whole hog i mean you come to us we pamper you it's not like an airbnb where i just so in fact let me tell you we use airbnb for our home stays which are service time i tag um but we use airbnb as our partner to drive sales so uh, they are not competition for us in any way then you talk about airbnb because the problem with airbnb in fact is that they use the word no live local they use that. so because of that reason <laughs> we are even more confused now <laughs> than we than, than earlier and honestly there is only one answer to this in my opinion and that is to spend some advertising money in educating the consumer of our who we are uh, that is the aspect we have never gotten into i myself am not from a marketing background that i could drive it myself so that i think is one aspect which is clearly missing in our business and i found that to be one difficulty uh, in scaling also that how do i scale i'm not being able to build a brand without uh, you know some concrete communication about what we are doing so so yeah So Airbnb more like a partner, not not so much competition. No, uh, what I actually meant was not as a competition because Airbnb was the one that sort of showed the world that there was an alternative, um, you know, uh, hotel option, right? So in India, not so much, Krishna. In India, before That's true. Airbnb came, uh, Oyo, Trebo, Fab, we were all there. Right. So I think right. in India we were able to establish the fact that alternative accommodation exists, and you know we are the guys who are doing it in the small inventory space. And I think Airbnb right. came into India in 2016. So uh, by that time, yes, we had uh, you know we had pretty much established that. Well, you are the best of both worlds, isn't it? A local experience plus all the frills that comes with a full-size hotel. To say that we are a serviced Airbnb. Anybody who asks me out of India, no, because then there everybody knows Airbnb. So the best way to say is that I am not Oyo and I am a service Airbnb. Just in one line to explain what we do. So, um, I'm ask I'm I'm going to ask you this uh, you know slightly different question. Just um, you know change uh, lanes a bit. 
uh, being a lady being a woman um, mm-hmm. has that been helpful was there a glass ceiling uh, was there any was 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 it any time tough uh, uh, you know to do what you're doing right now uh being a lady helped me in at least from the operational standpoint i think these guys were in shock okay that there is someone here in fact i have lots of photos with some locals where they are they look uh, they look very shocked that they have to stand with me and take pictures uh so i think they didn't they didn't quite speak in initially and even now they very sweet so i think being Thanks, a lady bye yeah i think it was very good at that time to really you know <laughs> for the shock value of it uh, but but i think in terms of the investing space uh, you know i mean honestly i haven't really found anything but in terms of the investing space i must say there definitely a glass ceiling somewhere uh, somehow women aren't really taken too seriously i were never able to raise the 1 billion dollars so in fact yesterday also i was reading i was going to do this article on why are women not getting the 1 billion dollars and i found i came across a, an article which said that last year globally there were 28 women whose businesses had crossed the 1 billion dollar mark so i guess we're getting there but but ha kahin pe to hai thoda sa glass ceiling hai kahin pe <laughs> well uh, coming from you you've been in venture capital uh, you know i must say you know there's possibly a, a glass ceiling uh, but but you know something um i uh, follow a playbook um and yeah. uh, i'm i'm part of this thing called startup leadership program i mentor startups there okay. uh, a couple of years ago um uh, they said uh, hey what are some of the hacks that you've done come and talk to us about it and i said uh, in the list of hacks and even today it's a strategy that um if i were to hire mm-hmm. and also co-found 9 out of 10 times i would i would pick a lady Okay. Um I I've just seen that the 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 perspective the approach is so different and refreshing. Um I would say you know what how big is your team? I would say okay how many uh how many women in that? Not so much as a oh you know what you need to change the gender quotient or no, nothing of that sort. Yeah, yeah, I'm, that's not that sort. I have no such forms. I would say whoever no, no. works the best to hire that guy. Yeah, uh, personally for me it's not about che- checking the diversity box or anything yeah, but absolutely. i've seen that w- when when there are women the whole uh, game the um, the the strategies that you employ they bring such a refreshing perspective it only strengthens or possibly multiplies what you already have so that's a definite thing uh, i don't know someday maybe one of these days the investing communities will wake up uh, hey you know you're at 125 you'll possibly hit 1000 soon i if you're checking the economic box <laughs> if you're checking the economics box and the management box um, and you seem to have a win-win situation uh, you'll gallop to the 1000 fast and uh, at that a billion dollars is easy yeah, i don't see that being a problem at all right um, so uh, uh, okay so awesome so uh, let's talk about family mm-hmm. um what's 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 family like uh um does um being uh kids how many kids one kid one kid's good okay <laughs> can't even fathom any more but uh, yeah so my kid is 12 he's in school and as he you know like i say i don't know humne kya paap kiya hame do bari sixth standard kyon karna pad raha hai because the problem is that you know i go home and the first thing is that okay what's there for homework tell me first so i am getting the homework done as well so that's a bit of a tough one and as he progresses i can't keep up with the math and the science because i am a commerce student myself so i'm like i don't know what the hell you're up to so yeah so it's getting tougher uh, and i'm really appreciating the english literature i can't tell you how much so uh, <laughs> that's something and uh, of course my husband has dappled himself in uh, startups he was uh, with a company which had uh, had a solution in uh, blockchain i i have to know uh. how to say that correctly so not in crypto but in blockchain uh, and funded by the by the nokri guys in poets um yeah so he's uh, done that as well otherwise he's from a transactions background 
so he was an MNA. Uh, so that's him, and uh, I mean it's it's very volatile. I must tell you. So it's like okay, are you home today? So fine, get the homework done. If I am home, I get the homework done. And PTMs we both dread because we know that hami da hami ko daan padegi because uh, you know the teachers are like you know his work doesn't come on time. And I'm like that's because we don't come on time, so his work <laughs> doesn't come on time. So. Uh, do you uh, have you cultivated a set of mentors uh, and advisors that you sort of fall back upon when you need some advice absolutely i think that is critical i don't think anybody can do anything without that so uh, actually you know the the person who was in the venture fund uh, initially before we started he is still around and he's one of the mentors uh then seed fund uh, you know the professionals who's actually looking after our uh, company they are very much around uh so um in initial i mean it's weird but uh, my initial ma- investors turned out to be the mentors and for everything even now we are basically we keep going back and forth i always say that it is a board run company because the three of us are usually the ones taking decisions together um so yeah so they're very much around this What are some of the founders or people that you admire and follow and channel? Uh it's more individualistic. I mean, uh I know a lot of people must say that, but for me my role model is Oprah. Not so much because she's rich and she's, you know, not not so much because of that, but more because of, you know, if you really hear what she says, she's got the she's got the trick to sort of navigate this world right so it's almost as if she could see the matrix and she is sort of the oracle right so she is one of the people i love and really look up to uh ariana fington i'm sure everybody says that uh she is great too um let me think of some of the indian uh, women um if you've heard of your story that's a great one as well shraddha has done some great work uh and uh, in terms of uh, uh what's that other lady's name um shiroz uh, they're doing some great work too so yeah some some great women entrepreneurs uh, here as well so we always love to get together learn new things Ooh. and yeah so any um names you can name mentors you have on speed dial Yeah sure uh two like i said the investors uh, both of them are on speed dial uh that's Vivek Behani from Bedrock Ventures and uh, Shailesh Vikram Singh from Seed Fund and i you know i saw your uh, twitter uh, timeline so game of thrones uh, uh harry harry potter <laughs> um... a complete fantasy free complete so, so... complete i've seen everything Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, you name it. Outside of the professional life, what's the what's uh, the real Aditi like? What what is she like? You know, what is she like to hang out with? I'm very boring, yeah. I watch everything on Netflix. It's Netflix and chill for me. <laughs> so, uh my typical Friday or a Saturday evening would be, you know, Razai me watching Netflix, eating some junk food. Perfect. and i'm quite a foodie by the way so i love my non veg um and yeah some me time sounds great i'm completely addicted to content so anything and everything is what i'm watching do you read yes. are you a reader i read a lot as well yeah i'm i'm always reading some book amazing uh what are some notable recent reads recently right now i am reading this uh, book called lord of the butterflies so if you've heard of button poetry uh you know this institution so it's a sort of poetry very different but it's come out of chicago and uh, you know it's a different form of uh, prose um so this is a book which is nominated for i think a, the booker this year so um i'm reading that these days interesting different very different uh and other than that i've read uh, i've read a lot of stuff i read a lot of fantasy again uh so you know um uh, which ones can i talk about i none of them none, none of the ones where there are any movies or anything being made but i've seen everything from twilight to you know all those series anything in the fantasy genre i love it 
um and uh, yeah and other than that uh, i have what else to add uh, i love pico ayer i love him in fact he if you see that he's the, the one i retweet the maximum so uh, the lady and the monk is one of my favorite books when i'm feeling down at any time i pick it up start reading it uh, his life is fascinating isn't it because uh, i mean somehow he can just leave his family for 6 months and travel it's pretty much of a dream so you know it's quite fantastic uh and i'm not say by the way i travel myself a lot so it's okay i if i had to you know actually do the numbers maybe i leave them for about 3 months in the year and i'm traveling as well amazing well well one more passion you know as soon as maybe you get to a thousand properties and do the ipo and then you can say i'll hang up my boots and do that Oh, by the way, travel comes Netflix also. I need Netflix also for, for sure. <laughs> so, um, so talking of fantasy, what's the fantasy outcome for Aditi and V Resorts? So, I think uh, we are quite clear about. So, I I haven't spoken about this. In fact, let me speak a little bit about it. Like I said, we stumbled upon the fact that we were really creating a lot of impact at the local level uh, without really, you know, thinking about. anything to do with sustainability we were actually um, you know doing things differently so that people could benefit and at the same time the business benefits as well so the economic benefits like i said the it is the model that allows you to break even at 20% if you had to hire somebody from an ihm so there in itself that model is done away with right so the fact that you are able to hire local people Is is one of the major reasons of being able to break even at that twenty percent. So um, I think those we have now started gaining recognition for the work that we're doing at the local uh, level, at the impact level. And uh, there is a whole impact space out there. Again, I'm not from this background, so I'm learning the ropes as we go about it. Uh, but uh, there is this whole area of impact. There are investors who are there. uh there are uh, funds of of uh, countries like the danish fund ifu or like the cdc which is the uk fund uh which are looking at developing countries interesting models coming from there and now after the unwt award and the affiliation we're able to actually see that you know some countries like say armenia are coming to us saying that okay can we replicate your model in this country so our model actually is perfect for a place a, a developing country think about america where there are actually no kirana yep. stores right so model to aap kaam hi nahi karega yeah it sounds like a sounds like a ha- happy um, i would i want to say happy accident um right uh, yeah um it's actually wonderful i mean we didn't uh, quite uh, expect so it's it. not by design but it was by accident uh, but it's a happy accident by accident completely completely i mean i'm i'm very honest about it because i'm like look we were i am an entrepreneur how to make money so we were always uh, you know uh, more motivated yeah. by the economic goals but see that's the beauty of it the even in hospitality when you look at sustainability people think that okay i will invest today i will have to invest 100 rupees today and i will see the benefit of right. that 100 rupees over the next 3 years i am trying to tell them that you do it this way you don't have to spend right. as much money you know today instead of 100 you are spending 90 rupees it makes sense there is no other way to really put it and see we've also spent more money in this business because we were also learning things as we went now if we were to start it with all our knowledge i mean we would be so capital efficient it's not funny so i think my uh, dream is really truly to show that this model can create what everybody is talking about it's a very large dream i know <laughs> but uh, it is uh, something that i really need to prove that you know this model can be taken global it can work for developing countries and uh, yeah i'm really sort of focused on that at the present time well hey uh, big hairy audacious goals are the ones that excite us right so uh, yeah, otherwise yeah. what are we, what are we here for so awesome right. uh, uh, aditi we had a terrific time uh, chatting um, this this has been amazing uh everything um sounds like pixie dust to me maybe you're just going out there and then you know sprinkling pixie Thank dust from you your fantasy land try the pixie dust oh we will we will you, you know will, you really go there certainly certainly uh one of one yeah. of these days um uh, maybe Absolutely. do a lot more than just uh, touring the property as well so uh, we know we will see you and v resorts um uh, you know scale greater heights and uh 
maharajas of scale will be there to you know cheer you and also you know do another session to show the world what that vantage point looks like thank you krishna sounds really wonderful thank you so much we hope you enjoyed the story if this story made a difference to you tell us by leaving a comment on the website or our social media channels help us spread the love by subscribing liking and sharing our show we welcome speaker suggestions and collaborations write to me at nida@maharajasofscale.com at